In this second lecture on quantitative methods of research, we will talk about conceptualization of a research. So first, before we go into the field to collect data, we need to conceptualize it. We need to plan it in terms of concepts, in terms of what are we looking for. Then the next lecture, we will talk about operationalization, meaning how I'm going to collect data, uh, precisely the method. So in this lecture, we are focusing on conceptualization. To begin with, a, quant a quantitative research, or any research for that matter, begins with a topic. Sometimes the topic can be in the form of a question, that you experienced something and you want to uh, inquire about it. So I'm a lecturer and uh, one question that I ask myself is, uh, do students who perform well in class, usually do they spend more time in study? So is there a relationship between time spent in studying and the results in an examination? Now, this is a beginning of a topic for research. And in fact, I'm phrasing it in the form of a question. And what do we see in this question? We see two variables. We see time spent in research, one variable, and results in an examination. So if you're a novice in, a qu in quantitative methods of research, think of very clear, two well-spelled out variables. And the second thing that you need to pay attention to is, are these two variables measurable? So if you take my example of time spent for study, is, it is measurable in terms of minutes, hours, uh, per day, per week, per month, measurable. Time spent in study. Results in an examination, yes, measurable in terms of marks. The marks can be got from the participant themselves or with their permission from the registrar's office. So then I can put together and see what is the relationship. Does one influence another? This is simply thinking in terms of a topic for quantitative research and you're beginning to conceptualize the research. So the first step in conceptualizing your research is think of a topic particularly if that topic can be phrased in a question that is easier still. And in that question, make sure you have at least two variables to begin with. And that is the first point. Secondly, now we need to conceptualize the variables. Uh, in the question of uh, does, is there a correlation or is there an association between the time spent in research and the results in an examination, Probably the concepts are very clear, the construct is clear, the variable is clear. But let us say, is there an association between women empowerment and divorce rates? Now this women empowerment is a construct. So what does it mean? What are the dimensions that will add up to a construct called women empowerment? For instance, will it include economic independence? Will it in, uh, include educational levels? Will it include uh, employment? Will it uh, include participation in decision making? Women empowerment. So what am I doing? I am really conceptualizing this construct, which in research becomes a variable, uh, called women empowerment. So when I, con uh, when I conceptualize, I'm actually finding out the dimensions that will add up to this construct called women empowerment. And what am I then doing? Then once I identify the dimensions, then I know how exactly I'm going to measure this construct called women empowerment. And this is what I call conceptualization of the constructs. And this is a very important element. And often, the conceptualization of a construct can be based on a theory, existing theory. So that takes us to the third step in conceptualizing our research, the theoretical framework. Theoretical framework is the platform uh, on which you stand to look at your phenomenon. If you, uh, you are trying to see whether existing theories can explain this phenomenon that you are studying, what is a theory? Theory is a set of statements or propositions that explain a phenomenon. 
it can be a model or a theory. Often authors say model is a, a theory in the making. A model is often an illustration, while theory is an explanation. When this theory becomes uh, universal, it becomes law, as we have laws in physical sciences, law of gravity, for example, is a universal theory, and therefore it becomes a law. In any case, coming back to the role of theory in our quantitative research, in the way we construct uh, a variable and conceptualize that variable, and the way we are going to measure that variable will be informed by the theory. The second role of the theory is that the theory can predict the relationship that exists between variables. And therefore, now we can choose a theory that exists. Of course, your theory should come from the discipline in which you are working uh, for your research. If you are a sociologist or a social worker, then your theory has to come from uh, social sciences, particularly in sociology. Now, there are two types of theories. We call uh, the first level of theory we call meta theories or grand theories. They are sort of uh, sort of large scale theories like you have uh, conflict theory in sociology. We have functionalism or structuralism. These are grand theories. They can explain a whole lot of stuff in the reality of the social world. But we have also what we have Merton called middle range theories. Middle range theories are smaller sort of theories that exist within the grand theory and they can explain a small amount of, small number of phenomena. But often, if you choose a grand theory, you may not, uh, you may not be able to really get uh, into the dynamics of your variables. So I would suggest often it is better to choose a middle range theory and work from within it to see how your variables interact. Now, the last thing in conceptualizing our research is what we call conceptual framework. What is conceptual framework? If you stand on the platform of the theory that you have chosen and have a look at the way your variables are interacting, how do they look like? Create a model. A, a hypothesized model, a conceptual model, which will be tested by your data. So, to begin with, you can put your independent variable on the left side of your picture, and you put your, as uh, you see in the slide, we can put our independent variable on the left side and the dependent variable on the right side, and then work around other variables that could be influencing this relationship. The arrows mean a lot. For example, unidirectional arrow could mean that one variable is influencing another variable. If it is bidirectional, then it could mean that both are influencing each other. In technical terms, we would call them uh, correlational relationships. Now, uh, when you conceptualize your research in terms of a conceptual framework, we need to remember that first point is that it is consistent with your theoretical framework. Secondly, the variables that are appearing in your research questions feature in your conceptual framework. Thirdly, the dimensions which you are going to use to measure these uh, variables also appear within the conceptual framework. Fourthly, the directions of the arrows indicate the relationship that exists within these variables. And finally, you need to think about what we call extraneous variables. There are other variables, other factors that are lying around this relationship. Are they influencing a particular variable or are they influencing a relationship? So, for example, in our example, uh, as you see in the screen, we have number of hours of study as the independent variable. And what we are conceptualizing is that number of hours of study will influence the outcome in an examination. However, this can be mediated through a method of study. So the method of study there, as the arrows indicate, is a mediating variable. And fourthly, I am also sort of conceptualizing that the method of study can influence the outcome in an examination depending on the sleeping pattern. So, 
uh, sleeping pattern becomes a moderating variable. So uh, this is how we construct a conceptual framework. And based on the conceptual framework, then you are now going to come up with your hypothesis. Hypotheses are simply the relationship, the envisaged relationship between our variables. Actually, if you do your conceptual framework very well, the relationship, the arrows would be your hypothesis. And then the data is going to test this hypothesis. And the notes we have will explain further about these con uh, concepts. So that is where we have the conceptualization of our research.